Hey, Alex here again. Sorry about the shaky handheld cam. As you can probably tell from the mess behind me, all of my workbenches right now are filled up with nonsense that I'm filming for projects. And my schedule's a little bit wacky over the course of this next, or this last week and the week coming up. But I wanted to make sure I got something out. So here's a quick project that just popped into my head because I had to use this adhesive for something. And that's making flexible joints with a type of glue called E6000. And this isn't necessarily related to any particular discipline, but it's very helpful for like the 3D print types because a lot of times it's difficult to get those little flexible joints to figure out how to do it. So here's one option. So without any further ado, let's check it out. Now here's the great part of this particular adhesive. It has great elongation properties. So it'll stretch five to seven times longer than its original shape. It'll also resist heat up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit and cold down to the negative degrees Fahrenheit range. It's also very slow curing. And while that might sound annoying, what is nice that that makes it self-leveling, as in it'll flow while it's drying out and it'll make a nice smooth surface. Now because of all those properties, that makes it very nice for either gluing flexible things to flexible things or rigid things to flexible things. But in this case, we're going to be gluing two rigid things and using the glue itself as the flexible thing. But hey, if you have to bond gems of power to your cloak of darkness so you can LARP, I, I'm not one to judge, works great for that. <laughs> Not that I would know anything about that nerd stuff, right? But in all seriousness, this stuff is very popular amongst cosplayers and people who are making, like, um, you know, stage jewelry and that type of thing. Now, this comes in either black or clear. Obviously, I have the clear stuff right here. It's always a good idea to read the back of the packaging on these. Now, a lot of times they're full crap, but this is actually pretty accurate. So surface should be clean, free of dirt and oil and that type of stuff. And I always scuff it up with like some 80 or 120 grit sandpaper and then just apply it in normal room temperature conditions. And as it says here, it does take about 72 hours to cure fully, but you can speed that up by putting it under a heat lamp to help the uh, solvents evaporate a little bit quicker and like running a fan over it. And the solvent they use to suspend the solids is pretty gross and noxious, so definitely use it either outside or in a ventilated area. So it has a nasty habit of seeping through things and gluing itself to whatever's around. So I use parchment paper. You can use wax paper, but you may have to use a couple sheets, maybe a couple sheets on top of aluminum foil. Then for added non-stickiness, you can use a little bit of petroleum jelly and just kind of smooth that around and it'll peel right up off of that. Or you can use something else like uh, silicone spray. That works fine, although you should probably prefer the petroleum jelly over that. Also, before you go ahead and pierce the foil here, wipe a little petroleum jelly on the threads and thread the cap back on, otherwise you are going to weld your cap to the tube and you'll never be able to open it again. Now you can see right here that it's, it's kind of viscous, but like I said, it is self-leveling, it just very slowly. And these are the pieces we're going to glue together. This was part of a bezel that I printed out for an LCD screen, but I'm going to rough it up. I snapped it in half. I'm going to rough it up with some sandpaper, and we're just going to make kind of a hinge type thing out of that. So what I'm going to do is just uh, spooge a little bit of this stuff onto the petroleum jelly covered paper, and then use a razor blade to sort of make a coating of it on the bottom lay the hinges on top so that I have the entire bottom of it coated, not necessary completely, but that's just how I'm gonna do it. And then sort of squish them together a little bit so that you have a bead of the stuff in between the two. Now, depending on how close these two pieces are to each other, that's how much resistance to bending you're gonna have. So you can make it either really stiff, like this is gonna be pretty stiff, um, but you could still get about a 90 degree bend out of it or more or you can keep the pieces a little bit further apart and make it a lot more flexible. So if you're using it to like print your own Infinity Gauntlet cosplay or something like that, you might want to keep the pieces a little bit further apart if you want to actually be able to get your fingers closed. And then for added strength, I'm just going to smooth it over on the top a little bit with a razor blade so that it overlaps. Not completely necessary, but you know. Common solvents that you might have around before it's dry, if you want to clean up, you can use acetone, like nail polish remover, or like a citrus cleaner. After it's dry, it's really hard to dissolve. You can use, there's some nasty chemicals that'll work. The most common and safest in question marks um, would be gasoline, regular gasoline. 
And here's another tip. I want the, this to dry all the way through, obviously. So to speed it up a little bit, I'm going to peel it off before it's fully cured. And I'm going to flip it over because this bottom part is, uh, that's going to stay a little bit wet for longer if I don't do that. And you can clean up some of the big pieces without having to use a solvent afterward. So I let this cure for about a day. And as you can see, it's it's almost completely dry. It's not super cured, but just look at how stretchy that stuff is. And it clings even with the super slippery PLA really nice after it's roughed up. Now, it isn't, like I said, fully cured, so it's you can still snap it off. And this is what it looks like when it's done. And if you remember, I estimated before, we should be able to get a little bit more than like a 90 degree bend out of it. Here we go. Pretty good. And like any other elastic material, there is some hysteresis memory effect, as you see, but it pretty much snaps into shape. So just some points to remember. Use ventilation because it is pretty noxious. 72 hours to full cure, but you can handle it in like 12 to 24 hours. A heat lamp and a fan will help speed that up, especially to make it less tacky. Rough up the surfaces with some heavy grit sandpaper, that'll help it cling a lot better. And be careful with ABS, because like I said, most of the solvent is acetone with some other nasty things in there. And as we all know, acetone will dissolve ABS, so it's not that you can't use it on it, just be careful and experiment with your piece before you go in for the final pass. Again, sorry for the shaky cam, thanks for checking out the video. Check out my support links in the description below. More videos out soon, and as always, until then, get out there and make something awesome.